Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very radical equation with complex numbers. We have the square root of z minus the square root of negative z, the opposite of z, equals 6 plus 8i and we're gonna try to solve for z. And I'll be presenting two methods. Great, so let's go ahead and start with the first method. For my first method, I want to take this equality or the equation and square both sides. Because we have radicals, this will help, right? When you square a difference, you're going to get a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. And ab can be written as square root of negative z squared. And the right hand side is going to be 6 squared, 36, minus 84 which is negative 28 plus 96i. Okay? Great. One thing that's really good about it is that z and negative z cancel out, and we end up with something like this. We can definitely divide both sides by negative 2 and end up with something like this, 14 minus 48i. Awesome. Now, we got something somewhat somewhat a simple expression on the right hand side but what about the left hand side we need to simplify it how do you simplify the square root of negative z squared first of all z squared cannot be negative well never mind z is complex so it could be but we can basically write this as i times z because when you square i z you get i squared z squared which is negative z squared so yes negative z squared can be written like that, so its square root can be written I, as iz, but not only iz, it could also be negative iz, because if you square negative iz, you get the same thing. So, this could be written as plus minus iz. I know I write the plus minus differently, that's the way I write it, and now it's equal to this. We kind of need to split this into two solutions, okay? iz equals 14 minus 48i. In this case, a lot of times people are going to divide by i. You could do it, no big deal. Or you can multiply by negative i, which is something that I like better. Because i times negative i is 1. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So this is 1. And on the right hand side, we get the following. 14i, 14, negative 14i. And then this becomes 48i squared plus 48i squared, which is a negative 48, right? Negative 48 minus 14i is one of the solutions. Now, remember, the other solution is going to be coming from negative iz equals this. And of course, you're going to multiply both sides by i. And that's going to give you the opposite of this number. That kind of makes sense, right? Because if z is a solution, negative z should also be a solution. Correct? Is it true? Maybe. And we can get verified with the solution he from here. So if we divide by, not divide, multiply by i, you're going to get negative 48i squared, which is 48 plus 14i. Again, they are opposites, right? z sub 1 and z sub 2. And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Now, here's the thing. If you ask this question to Wolfram Alpha, I didn't, but you can do it, then we should be getting what? One solution only, right? I don't think two solutions are going to satisfy this because there's a good reason behind that and I want you to find out. Anyways, let's talk about the second method and we'll just finish with that. Okay, so again, we have square root of z minus the square root of negative z equals 6 plus 8i. Second method is going to use something different. Instead of squaring both sides and dealing with negative z squared, I want to write this directly using i. And I can do that by using i outside the radical and multiplying it by the square root of z. And the reason is simple, because 
if you square i times square root of z, you get i squared z, which is negative z. And again, if you square root it, you get back to the original. But there are two square roots you should always remember, and only one of them is considered the principal square root, but in this case, it doesn't matter. So we can just write this as follows. So there are two ways to handle it. This could be a plus minus, right? So let's go ahead and consider both cases. But let's kind of start with the minus sign this time. So how would you solve for z? Easy, easy. You would take out square root of z, it's factorable. And then from here, you would get something nice because that will be a quotient, right? You could divide by one minus i and then multiply by one plus i over one plus i. Those are conjugates. And then we're going to distribute. Let's do it. Six times one, six times i, eight i times one, eight i times i minus eight, divide by one plus i. This is negative two. Oops, I uh, forgot to multiply the bottom. The bottom should be a 2 because the product of these two things. Negative 2 plus 14i divided by 2. And that will be negative 1 plus 7i. Really? Does, is that the answer? Wait a minute. This is not the answer because this is just square root of z. So I'm supposed to square both sides. If you square both sides, you get something like this. z equals negative 1 plus 7i squared, and that will be what? Negative 1 squared plus 7i squared minus 14i, and that's negative 48 minus 14i. And as you know, this is one of the solutions that we obtained using the first method. Do you think we're going to get the same answer by using the other sign? Okay, let's go ahead and find out. So this time we're going to use the plus sign, root z plus i root z equals, what was the right hand side? 6 plus 8i. By the way, 6 plus 8i is a special number because if you think about it, it comes from the 3, 4, 5 triangle. You got that? Okay, so it's modulus is 10. Now we're going to do the same thing. Take out square root of z factor, and divide, simplify, so on and so forth. Okay, great. We're going to multiply by the conjugates again. And that'll give us something similar. 6, and then plus 8, and then minus 6i plus 8i, divided by 2. And then square root of z finally becomes 14 this becomes plus 2i divided by 2, and that gives you 7 plus i, right? And then if you square both sides, you're going to get 49 plus i squared for plus 14i. This is negative 1, so z will be 48 plus 14i as before, right? So there are two solutions. They're opposites, but which one should be valid according to Wolfram Alpha? Hopefully, you're going to find out and let us know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.